And welcome everybody to Late Night Love. I am your host, James Just, and today is a difficult day for us to come and talk about love, but it's also a day when it's probably most needed. Um, as we sit and watch civil unrest whirl across the country, we um, should probably take a moment and think about things we love, why we love, and the type of society we want to live in in the future but for us we're going to deal with the next hour so let's try and focus for an hour if we can on something positive some things we love and you know have a philosophical moment a philosophical break before we have to face the cold hard realities of of the modern life so we have a list in here of questions. We've got, let me take a minute here. And so I guess we'll see again, actually start with the most basic question of what is love? I and mean, we all kind of think of the romantic love, the love you have of your spouse or the love you have of your parent. I guess that's not a romantic love, but you know what I mean. You've got the romantic love. You've got the kind of parental love, the familial love. You know, there's two different types of love. You love your best friend. You love your dog. You know, those are different. You know, you may love pizza, I suppose. But does that actually love? Is your love of pizza or your love of wine or your love of Marijuana, is that actually love? Or is that just a preference? Is something you, you know, is there a difference between that? Do we use the phrase love too easily when it comes to things like food, wine, clothes, jeans? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a grand encourager of uh, loving things and expressing your love and telling those around you that you love them. And so, please say it more. I think we need in society to say that more. That's just an M80. My neighborhood is, like many others, in uh, stress. So we may hear occasional noises going by, or the police helicopter may pass by on occasion. We'll shall see. Oh, thank you, sir. You guys are, uh, I love you guys in Africa. You guys do real work. We're, we are easy here. Who are you talking to? I would butcher his name. Mubi John Socrates. He's out of Africa. I will get the countries wrong because I confuse them all the time and I hate when I do that. But, but he's, he, a, he's from Africa. He's a libertarian activist from Africa. He goes around. Um, he has, I believe, he has a school, well, kind of like a school, like a library, libertarian library. Maybe it's what it is. Amazing. And he travels around Africa teaching libertarian principles, economic freedom, and it's it's a really he's a great guy, and he loves he loves liberty and he loves his country and he loves people, and so he he works hard to try to spread that across Africa. And, you know, those of us here in the United States, we have it easy. We think we have trying to spread liberty tough. We try and spread liberty over roads that aren't paved. You know, it's, you know, these are these are people who wear a, uh, a sewing machine can be the life, the difference between a good life and abject poverty. It won't make much of a difference, but... <laughs> but the helicopters are what helicopters are. I told you we'd heal the helicopter. <laughs> we lived here a long time. We know how it goes. You know, that might be the life flight. We live by the medical center and life flight helicopters are a thing you have to accept when living around here. And uh, I will never complain about a helicopter because 
there's someone on there having a very bad day and there's family who is concerned about someone they love. And so it would be just wrong for me to complain that I can't hear my TV show or my radio or it's, or it's interfering with my little podcast. That would be inhuman. So we accept the fact that we get a little noise and we deal with it because, you know, we live in a society and if you want to love other human beings, you have to accept the fact that you live around a lot of other human beings. There's going to be noise and smells and, and things you don't necessarily like, but you have to love humanity more. And I guess when we're talking about, get back to the discussion of what is love, I guess, is that, is there the difference, you know, the love of people, the love of individuals, your, your mother, your spouse, your best friend, and the love of humanity. How do those two interplay? How do us as a society express our love for humanity? You know, these, these protests these days, and I really didn't want to start to talk about it, but these are groups of people who are expressing a love for their community and they've been expressing it for a long time and haven't been heard. And what we are seeing is little decades of frustration exploding. And you know, how do we respond to that? We must as a society respond with love because responding with more draconian measures will only lead to more problems. We'll literally start the revolution we want to prevent. We want to save people's lives. We want to save humanity. We want to love people. We'll not go the other way. All right, so let's move on to something else. You were delving into love of humanity, love of individuals versus love of humanity. Yeah. Were you done with that topic? Well, I was getting kind of morose with that topic and I was running out of places to go that was positive and inspiring and ah. I didn't want to become Well, let's move on. Here in this format, you know, I have many opportunities to express my concern about politics and society and culture. Here, I want to express my love of people and the love of humanity and the love of love and so when i start to get morose or there become the conversation gets to a point where it's delving into politics or there's nowhere positive to go it's time to move on to a different subject because i can cover that other places if this was my only outlet then maybe i would be more inclined to cover that but because i have Libertarian Counterpoint. For those of you who don't know, I have a TV show I'm a part of. I have Libertarian Counterpoint. I have my campaign for office that we're not going to talk about here. You guys can look it up. You can. It's easy to find. To express myself and to try to make the world a better place. But there have some realities with those outlets. And you can't express love the same way I can here. So that's why we try to be love here. And we try to be positive and upbeat. So, what are some of the pros and cons of being in love? Well, that is an interesting philosophical conversation. The pros of being in love are actually quite easy to think about, right? You, I mean, we're talking the romantic part of love, right? First, because we'll have to segment off. We've just discussed that there's a wide variety of types of love. Well, it did define in love. That's very specific. Well, yes, but it could be, you know, the pros and cons of family love. Your parents oh, okay. can take advantage of you. True. Your grandparents oh. can take advantage of you. Your sister can, your siblings can, your children can take advantage of you. There's all that does happen. There's cons of that kind of love, the blinders. You know, the rose-colored glasses is a negative portion, a potential negative portion of love. Is you, If you love somebody too deeply, you can give them too many chances that they aren't working hard enough to earn. There's, you know, there are dangers to love, but not the dangers of not loving are far bigger than the dangers of loving. 
Because if you don't love, you become a hard, cold individual. You lack a humanity. You have to wrap yourself essentially in a, a suit of armor to prevent yourself from loving. And so it's just, it's not good for you. It's not good for your community. It's not good for your families. It, it's psychologically damaging long-term. I mean, you can do it for a while, right? If you've just had a traumatic experience, you can put the suit of armor on and to protect yourself as you rebuild your sense of self. And that's a good thing, right? Because now you've also learned to be stronger. You've learned how to protect yourself. But at the same time, you have to have the courage to take that back off, put it down to the side and say, I'll use that when needed. So I'm open to loving again. Just think about us. If we had not taken off our suit of armor to reach out to each other, we wouldn't be here some a de a decade later. You know, we both had very good reasons to never trust somebody and trust love again. And yet the benefits that love gives, the psychological benefits, the partnership benefits, the, the knowing that someone will have your back on your worst freaking day benefits. Do you know that sense of, okay, as long as I don't do something insanely ass stupid to hurt that person, I can be who I am. Yes. I mean, we all know there's a handful of lines you cannot cross. And trust me, if you love somebody enough, if there is enough love, you can actually occasionally cross those lines and build your way back. It's insanely difficult, but it has been done. Right? And you don't encourage it, right? If people cross Why lines, you well, you know, one wants to. I mean, but, but we're human, right? Humans okay. are humans, our traumas oh, happen. True, and it, that would, you know, would we want to be loving here and empathetic and think the boast of most people and someone's hurting and lonely because of issues in their marriage or something. And they have a weak moment, so to speak. And then they go and they work through their marriage and they can rebuild it. It's not a easy path. It's not a likely path, but it can happen. It does happen. And so it's, it's not something I would necessarily recommend but it's also not something I would tell somebody not to do. If your partner is willing to put in the effort, love is worth the effort, even if you fail in the long run. As long as you're putting in the effort and as long as you don't have such blinders on that you're not willing to see that, okay, we've tried, we've tried hard, it's not gonna work and we have to dissolve this as friendly and as amicable as possible because to other do otherwise is unloving. Because if you have any law, type of long-term relationship, there was some love there at some point. There was something about that human being to love. There is part of you in them. As good, bad, and, and indifferent, it's you can't. It doesn't go away because you've become a separate. You've separated. You've built different lives. You carry that with you. Now, when you heal from that trauma of separation or the trauma of whatever caused your, your relationship to dissolve, you know, you put that in its right place, right? There's, we call it the box on the shelf, right? You take a box on the shelf. Yeah, okay, and you put it back up. But you look at it every now and again, right? You say, is there anything in here I need to deal with? No, great, sweet, thanks. You stick it up and you let it sit for a couple more years because you, you know, you want to be aware. You don't want to become lost in the rose colored glasses, lost in your bubble, but you also don't want to carry the baggage around with you all the time. And so it's a very hard thing to do. You know, the loss of trust and rebuilding that it's a, it's a very insanely hard thing to do. Most people cannot do it. Even if, even if the love and the desire is true because we are humans. And once we get hurt like that deeply, you know, no one can hurt you more than the person you love the most. And, so once you get hurt that deeply, it's it's a very difficult wound to heal. And so and that's kind of beat that one to death. I'm gonna start repeating myself. And I don't like doing that. So let's see. 
Do you think it's possible to fall out of love? Well, yes. I think it's possible for you to start as one type of person who has one group sets of wants, needs, and desires, and you think you're both going into the same direction. But as you get older, as you mature, as you learn and grow and evolve, that you want different things. And that there's becomes a point where you can no longer realistically get to both places. And so one person or the other or both is going to have to sacrifice too much, which will lead to unhappiness and resentment and separation. And so in that particular case, you're kind of better off finding that out as soon as possible and dissolving the relationship while you still can do it on a friendly basis before you've created all kinds of long-term trauma that would be disastrous to your whole communities, your friends, your family, and those you particularly care about. Yeah, I think that's about it. That one's actually a short one to cover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you can show love. Oh, I'm terrible at showing love. Um, well, I guess actually, okay, so here was, was, we can actually talk about, I don't know how well you can hear her off camera. So it, it's because she, she is the love of my life over here. She takes show notes so we can put an appropriate um, thing on the end so we can put the appropriate tags on it. And when we get the love line working, which we are going to try to get working, I just didn't have, I got busy this week with some other stuff and I didn't have a chance to work through the technology. And when we get the love line working, hopefully next week, she will monitor the love line for us. And so she was, and so if, I don't know if you can hear, but what we were, we were talking about, we were just talking about, about I'm not very good at showing love. I don't believe I'm very good at showing love. And I guess maybe, I guess the tradition, the, the way I can think about it is I don't show love in a traditional way. Correct. And it's my expressions of love happen. God, I almost hate to use the word organically. Yes, they do. I'm not a flower buyer. Sometimes it, you do. Sometimes you buy me flowers. Yeah, when, well, I'm literally when I'm standing there. Hey, those would look nice. I think Christina would like them. That's literally. It's not. There's no more thought. It's literally. You bought me flowers for my birthday. And... Yeah. But we don't do birthdays. We do birthdays weird. We do holidays and birthdays We're weird. We're very strange. <laughs> well, because I think actually part of that's because we express our love and, and, and affection and all day. all day, every day. And so when you have these birthdays or Valentine's Day or all these special days, it's like, I don't know if I can express now, more. Now, wait a minute. Before people get an idea, I always get a lovely birthday card. Oh, I'm awesome at picking no birthday cards. what. Yes, I'm awesome at picking birthday cards. I get something for my birthday. Of course I do. Oh well, yeah. But we yeah. don't but yeah, but we do it differently. Uh, a lot of people out there would look at how we do birthdays and holidays and and Valentine's days and all these things as strange. Because we are very untraditional. Yes, we are. Because we but we we're untraditional because we express our love freely every day constantly and it almost seems like adding more like on valentine's day it almost seems like you're being greedy right well i mean for me because it's like i don't want extra stuff because i get so much love from you every day of the year that i don't need the to be have more I, how can i ask for more how can i expect more than what i get all day every day I mean, no, let's be honest, we're human beings. We can't be on our top of our game all day, every day, but you try your hardest all day, every day. And that for me is what love is, is trying your best to, you know, manage that balance that we all have to manage between ourselves and our partner and, and the things going on in our lives. And, and I always know that I am considered in my appropriate place on that list and it doesn't have to be i'm not always number one and i don't have to always be number one i'm not an ego there's things that are, at times are more important than me well sometimes my granddaughter's video call takes preference <laughs> over this. and you have had to make the same thing like our time my time is no longer my own which means yes. my time is no longer your own right now at least until november 
And so you have to sacrifice, you know, your, some of your time with me. And that's an expression of love as, as well. Well, you always think you're fun. Well, I'm not sure running a campaign going to end come down October going to be all that fun, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we will, we will find a way to love it. We, we really will because we do. That's what we do. We love to have fun. And even we try to laugh and joke can express that every as, day every day because you make me laugh every day you make it a point i love it it's making <laughs> a point to make me laugh every day what what can you not <laughs> what other form of love do you want a bigger bank account i think might that's, be. Not, that's not love <laughs> well i don't know some people might love a ferrari i suppose and, you know i would if someone hey so if someone wants to send me a ferrari I'll even take a matchbox one. <laughs> okay, so actually, I have a question for anybody who's listening. If you go to our webpage, what the heck is it? Our, our Anchor FM, I've got to look it up. Our Anchor FM, I'm sorry. It's Anchor FM. Oh, I think it's Late Night Love, to be honest. Oops, wrong one. Anyway, if you go to Anchor FM dash Late Night Love slash Late Night Love, I believe is what it is. Um, you can leave a, a voice comment, and so tell us what your favorite romantic song is, and we'll talk about that next next week. We'll talk about the favorite romantic songs next week because I would talk about it now, but I have no idea what my favorite romantic song is. That's not true. I do know what my favorite romantic song is, but we're not going to talk about it this week. All right, so. That's for next week. Let's see what we got left. Uh, do I believe love conquers all? I would love it if love conquered all. I really would, but it doesn't. Love can get you through many things. It can get you through many tough times. It can get you through difficult patches. It can get you through betrayal, lies. But it can't get you through a host of them. It can't get you through a lack of effort. It can't get you through if the other person doesn't love you. In cases like that, love can cause more pain than is imaginable. There are times in my life where the emotional pain of lost love, so to speak, was far worse than the physical pain I've experienced with an exploded knee or whatever the various injuries I've suffered. I'd take my knee pain again. I'd take my knee surgery pain uh, again before I take the emotional pain of having your heart ripped out of you. So I wish, I would love for love to conquer all. Because if it did, we could look out on the streets and say, why can't we love each other? Why can't we conquer this problem that we are, our society is facing with love? Why can't I just go to my neighbor, hug you, and say, despite our differences, I love you anyway. Let's sit down and work out our problems. But unfortunately, the world doesn't work like that. We would like it to. We all, in our utopias, we all have our version of utopia. But the reality is utopia, it means a place that doesn't exist. But love can get you to the closest thing. When you have two people, or more, I suppose, who genuinely love each other, who are generally working hard towards making each other's lives better, more fulfilling, more enriching, to accomplish whatever that is they want to accomplish in life. When you're all kind of working that same general direction over 
a course of time, right? We all kind of have different motives for weeks or for months, right? Things happen. We're, we're human. We're talking over a course of time here. As long as we're all working in the general direction over the course of time, love can accomplish wonderful, glorious things. you look back at all the inventions, the advancements of humanity, how many of them were done because one person, often historically we say it's a man, but I question that, will invent something, go out their way, go through a whole hassle of issues and, and, and trials and tribulations to do something, to make the, the lives better for the one you love. The story I like to um, relate about that would be the first person, and I God, I forget his name, who invented a working telephone system. It wasn't Alexander Graham Bell or the guy who he didn't beat on getting the patent for the telephone system delivered. It was 75 years earlier. Some guy in a rural farm got tired of his wife yelling at him to go do tasks for him. So he built a, a working telephone system in his house. And he would show it off to his friends and neighbors, but he never had any interest in developing it because he just wanted to solve his problem of making his wife happy. That's all he wanted to do. He wanted to make his wife happy. And how many food dishes have been made because a wife has said, I want to make my husband happier after he's gone out and hunted boar to, to bring it home. I got to find a better way to cook this. How many women sat together and say, how do we design a better weave basket so when we're out picking berries while the men are out hunting bear so we can do it better and more efficiently so we don't kill ourselves? That's fat of love. The love of yourself, the love of your back, <laughs> the love of your next door neighbor, the love of your friend. And when we see this type of love every day, strangers, and I actually forgot what the heck we were talking about now. I'm talking about talking myself out of a topic. I have no idea what the heck. <laughs> Does love come from? Ah, thank you. For getting me back on topic. I was just kind of waxing philosophically and forgot what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> These are kind of like dress rehearsals until we get this love line working. But it's also important because I think people need to understand how my view on love is and how I approach the world and the love If people. If I want people to talk to me and trust about their issues in their life, about love and about, you know, various, whatever it is they may want to call and talk to us about, or may, may want my opinion on, they have to understand my perspective and where I'm coming from. And so I think that's why these first couple shows, even though we, didn't get the love line up working like I'd want. I, mean, I should put the number up so it's ready. Um, but still, it's even if it's just a working dress rehearsal, it lets people understand my perspective and, and my, my, my point of view. Build some trust with the audience. Even though for an hour it's pretty hard to do that without audience interaction and back and forth. But... I've always said I can talk, I can fill time. That's live TV training. See, I can vamp very easily with just talking and filling time. And the whole world would not know that that's actually what I'm doing is pretending that I'm actually not sitting here pretending and filling time and letting the world know that I love my job as a TV host. It lets me talk without having to <laughs> actually say anything. <laughs> okay. How are attraction and love different? Yeah. Attraction is a base. Okay. First, let's go. Sexual attraction is a base human instinct. We see something that fits our mind's eye of attractive. And, you know, that's, it, there's some personal issues there. There's cultural you know, norms, there's a whole wide variety of why we think something is attractive. You know, why one person maybe for prefer blondes over brunettes or 
or long leggy people or short people. You know, it, it's, you know, some people like wider people. Some people like skinnier people. It's the world is a smorgasbord. Thank God. And it would be boring if we were all the same. Um, so the attraction is the base animal instinct of you see something that you, your mind eyes finds attractive. And so you want to target it essentially like the hunter instinct. Well, it's not just the hunter instinct in, in men. It's, it's the, it's the picking instinct, the gathering instinct in okay. women. Okay. It, it, it's the same thing. You, you see target, go after it, see good piece of fruit, go pick it. It's this, it's the same it's the same base instinct. It, man, we are animals. We are base instinct animals. Now, the difference between us and a base instinct animal is we can say, oh, no, that's Bob's friend. She's taken. I've got to go. I'm going to go look somewhere else. Right. Or, no, I have a girlfriend. It's really not right for me to be looking at her like that or whatever it is, you know, or my boyfriend wouldn't be happy if me looking at you know, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah. And so the attraction is that kind of base attraction. We actually can't help it. it it's a nervous injection back in our head. It lessens as we get older and you mature, right? Because us old people, we don't need it anymore. <laughs> you know, we're done procreating. We don't need that. <laughs> instinct anymore we can look when we look for things we look for attractiveness in different things intellectual attractiveness uh, kindness, kindness and, and the various personality traits it's not so visual it's not so superficial right as when you're young you look for the visual and the superficial is she attractive does he have a car is she you know whatever it, superficial thing youth looks at now it's not youth's fault. Youth, they don't have enough experience to know about how to judge all these other things. They're freaking 17. They've played with themselves and gone to the bathroom. That's all they've done. It's <laughs> she's rolling her eyes over here at me, people. They're just to let you know. <laughs> but at 17, that's all you should have be done. That that's right. That's perfectly natural. There's nothing wrong with that. That's self-love, and it's okay. It's <laughs> see, I wish she was comfortable on camera because you guys would be amazed at the looks she's trying not to give me over here. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> I think maybe we should move on. I think I'm going to get myself in trouble. I'm going to be sleeping on a sofa bed or something. All right. Do, 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 do. What we've we got left? What do you like? Are there different types of love? Wait, did we discuss that one already? Probably, yes, we we have, yes. Um, why do people fall in love? That's an interesting one. That's a good one. And why do do I believe in love at first sight? <sighs> okay, we'll come back to the why do people fall in love? Good lord, it's hot in here. Um do you believe in love at first sight? I believe that you can have that first sight of attraction and then it can quickly build into love if you're. Uh, if the stars are aligned. If the things align correctly, yes. yes. If your personalities, wants, needs, desires, goals, all whatever it is you want to define, that thing we call love are match the needs. If your need, if the needs match, if the needs and wants match, and you happen to have that kind of a strong initial physical attraction, I think it can appear that you have love at first sight. I think it can feel that way, but I would really doubt it's actually genuinely love at first sight. It's infatuation. Yeah, and I, but, it, but it can't, but love can develop quickly. Yes. Genuine true love can develop quickly. And so it, you, it's almost like splitting hairs. Right. It's is it love at first sight or is it, you know, love on, you know, steroids? It doesn't matter, mm. I guess, is the open question is the question is, is it real? I guess is the point that we should be thinking about. Is love is the love real? Not is it on 
not is it love at first sight, but is the love that you've developed, is it actually real? Because if it's real, who cares? If the love is real and everybody's willing to work at it, who cares? If it's first sight, third sight, or four years later, right? We've all heard about these things, about people who, you know, knew each other in high school, didn't maybe even didn't even like each other, barely knew each other, and then 10 years later, they fall in love. You know, those stories happen probably more often than the love at first sight. You know, in that particular case, maybe people, you know, grew to love each other in the different ways. You know, we talk about how people can grow apart, but how people might be vastly different when they're young and grow together while they're apart. And then, you know, love makes more sense at the later date. And so love is a strange beast. There's, unfortunately, there's no script. There's no manuscript. There's no manual. You know, you can't, you can't pick up a book and say A, B, C, and D. You do this and you'll be happy. It doesn't work that way. I purchased a manual, Relationships for Dummies. Did it work? No. Well, see. <laughs> but it was chock full of useful information. Now that is a different question. You might because you can go, you can actually pull a you know a book like Relationships for Dummies. That's really interesting. Why the hell is he want rela anyway? Relationships for Dummies book. That's an interesting discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Why the hell would you try a Relationship for Dummies book? Because I was dating an idiot. That's a good reason. <laughs> Dating an idiot is a good reason to buy a relationship for dummies book. Okay. I stand corrected. There is a reason. <laughs> Still didn't work. It wasn't me, was it? No. Okay. <laughs> Wait for you. Okay. I was just checking, just making sure. <laughs> She tell me the truth. If she did, she bought it. Really bought it for me. She tell me the truth. Oh, she wants this. Okay. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to light it. So <laughs> with that, we've we've got it all sidetracked. What the hell were we talking about? Mm. Do you believe in love at first sight? No, actually, I want to talk were, about. You were gonna do why do people fall in love? No, I want to talk about this relationship for dummies book. Okay. <laughs> We need to put you a microphone every now and again. We need to get one over there so you can plug in and get this on good. Because I doubt they're going to be able to hear you very good because of the mic I'm using. So I'm going to have to translate. It's going to be so weird on the, on the thing. We'll have to find out later. They broke it down. Yeah? Yeah. <coughs> Keep your pants zipped up when you're not home. Is that Was that in there? Is that simple like that? Well, they did. <laughs> there was a whole chapter on when you should have sex. When the other person says yes, uh, it's kind of. No, that's when you. Right? That's when the other person says yes, that's when you get to have sex. I'm done. <laughs> what? No, you should be getting some of your needs met, are you? Is, or is everything stable? Well, there's more to needs than sex. Your other needs met. Your emotional. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if you're getting all your other needs met, if you're having your full emotional needs met, uh, I don't want to say sex becomes unimportant, but it's that connection you need from that you get from physical sex is less needed. Because you get the fulfillment in every yes. other possible way. Yes. It's people who don't have as much <laughs> of that, they have to have sex more often so they can feel connected. Yes. I think would be, is that kind of the way to? Yes. If I put on my psychologist hat, then I'm not one. I am not a psychologist in any stretch of the imagination. No, I have been in therapy for 10 years, well, 12 years. 13 years, something like that. And I did sit through two years worth of uh, psychology lectures on YouTube. 
in about six months. I didn't take any tests or anything. I am not a psychologist. Don't get me wrong. I just watched two years of psychology lectures. That's not the same thing as being educated in psychology. <coughs> I want everybody to understand that. I wasn't looking to become a psychologist. I was just looking to gather some information, gather some perspectives. It was actually a marketing exercise. If you all want to know the truth, it <laughs> but, you know, I learned far more about it, you know, than marketing because I actually love marketing from a psychological perspective. It's, it's fun to think about. And you know me, I like intellectual, I love intellectual exercises. Yes. Speaking of love and intellectual exercises, I have an intellectual exercise for everybody. It's something I love to do when I was suffering from insomnia. You'd lay down and you're trying to get to sleep right with insomnia. And so you think about the speed of light. Right. You think about Einstein's theory, the speed of light and relatively and all that stuff. So what happens if you are on a particle of light traveling at the speed of light? Does time stop? According to Einstein's theory, the faster you go, approach the speed of light, right? The slower time goes and does time stop? And you sit there and think about it and think about all the consequences, therefore. And then you have to but there is actually a caveat to that. You have to consider how we measure time. We as human beings measure time as the rate of decay. And so as you accelerate it, what's actually happening is the rate of decay is slowing down. And so we may not be understanding time properly. Now, I no physicist either. So, <laughs> so it's all a thought experiment. But it's an interesting thought experiment. And it can put you to sleep. So if you ever have insomnia issues, think about the nature of time and speed of light and how they meld together. It gives you a, uh, something to do and something I love to do because it's, it's, it's an intellectual exercise. It bring, if you do it properly, you think far more about things in time and speed and nature. You get to think about the nature of life. And so, you know, it's better than counting sheep is what I'm saying, I guess. All right. So what, the other thing we're going to talk about is. Why do people fall in love? Why do you fall in love? Well, the biologists, I suppose so you would say the biologist people would glow. You fall in love, right, to procreate, to, uh, you know, procreate the species, to continue the active species. But then that doesn't explain, you know, same-sex love. It doesn't explain elder love, you know, love from older older people who, you know, fall in love later in life after they've lost their other spouse or something. Um, so, so the question is, why do you fall in love? Is there's... Well, we are social creatures. There's a couple of reasons to it. One, we are social creatures. We simply are more psychologically healthy when we have a partner or two. When we have someone to share our lives experience with, when we have someone to rely on, someone to, you know, we know we're going through life. But it's also, in a practical sense, it's easier to get through life with two people. You know, three people becomes complicated, but two people, you know, you, you have a partner to help do things, to help accomplish goals. You have someone to, to share the trials and tribulations and successes with, but you also have someone to bounce ideas off of, to learn from someone to do the tasks that you need, that need done while you're off doing other tasks, right? There's too many things to be done in life for one person to successfully do and have a life path subsistence, subsistence. And I think what the human animal has done is it's gotten itself past subsistence existence. And love is part of that tool that has done that. And I don't think we're the only creature that has love. I think we can all see out in 
you know, the wild, there are other animals. And it's hard to know how many, but there are clearly animals out there that have family units that they care about. Elephants, dolphins, right? Whales. Or, or maybe some of the main ones, but that we all think about, but there's probably hundreds of others. And yes, there's, you know, the mindless ants and all those various things that where they're just functioning essentially purely on instinct. But the brain, be it the animal brain or the human brain, is a lovely thing. It grows and evolves. In a billion years, we don't you know who knows. Penguins might be sentient. They may have figured out a way to build penguin hospitals. I don't know. I mean, probably not. But if humans hadn't been here, you know, who knows what would have been the animal that would have developed opposable thumbs and can actually build things. I mean, that's the real difference between human animals and other animals with paws or or claws or or anything else, we have these thumbs and these hands that allow us to grasp and manipulate and deal things on a little mic level, right? We, we have an efficient use of tools, the ability to make and build things is uh, the, the difference between humanity, not our intelligence. I think, you know, pigs, dolphins, elephants, whales probably are on par in raw brain power with humanity, I would suspect. But it can only go so far because they don't have the ability to manipulate their environment to an extent that the rest of us do, that humanity does. Okay, so we'll get one more thing to do. We've got technically 10 minutes left, but, you know, we don't actually have a, a schedule here. Uh, da, 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 what do we got? What is love? Who do you love? No, that's da, 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 some pros and cons. Moala, Sola, romantic movie, favorite song. No, I asked you guys, so remember, please go to our Anchor FM page and leave us a or just on the you know, wherever you saw this. And leave us a comment about what your favorite song, what your favorite romantic song is. And we'll talk about our favorite romantic songs. You, as well, have to figure out your favorite romantic song next week. Yeah, yeah, you jaw all over there. You can put your jaw, put your, you have to figure out your favorite romantic song. Okay. You don't have to say it on air, you just have to tell me. I already know. Oh. But I have to dig out the... Well, just tell me what the title is. I can find it. That song you sent to me, the first song you ever sent to me, LL Cool J. Ah, okay, I know what it is. So it's our, uh, oh, oddly enough, my our podcast address is anchor.fm slash James Dash Just. Just so y'all know here, yeah, I'll put it in the, hold on, let me put it in the, the screen, even though most of y'all are will be watching on. Yeah, I'll be listening instead of watching, but that's all right. It's Anchor FM slash James Dash Just, and you it's where the podcast is hosted. You can leave a voice comment there and about tell me, tell us what your favorite song is, or any other thing you want, any other question you might like me to ask. You know, we'll get the love line up next week, hopefully, and we can take calls in. So let's see. All right, so let's answer a relationship question. Would I ever go on a no? Because I've would you I, ever go on a what blind date? <laughs> that was just reading out loud, and it wasn't really answering the question because no, I'm not gonna go. How in the hell am I gonna go on a blind date? That would mean like something would have to happen with us. So no, I'm not gonna go on a blind date. Okay, but when you were dating, I never dated you, anybody. Did you? You never date when you met people and I didn't meet anybody. Went out and did things. I didn't. You never did activities. You never went out and ate a meal. You've met me, right? What was our first engagement, shall we say? Was it a date? Our first meeting was an old sack. It wasn't even a date, was it? 
No, we were, we met. You won't let me call it a date. I rest my case. So no, I won't go on a blind date. <laughs> But that's my personal view. Now, if would I, if I were somebody else, theoretically, would I rule completely rule out a blind date? No, I would not. If you had a trusted friend who said, "Hey, I know somebody I, who you may or may not find interesting," you know, would you like to meet them? Yeah, okay. You know, I'm one of those people. I'm willing to talk to anybody, but I don't do dates personally. So, if you are a person who does do dates. Then yeah, sure, go do a blind date. Only if you trust the person who set you up. There is that caveat to that. Now they can still be wrong. You know, the person who set you up can be wrong. And no, if your mother sets you up on a blind date, do not go. That is a universal rule. Do not go if your mother sets you up on a blind date. Hey. What? Your mom knows you better than anybody on the Facebook. Your mother has rose-colored glasses. She thinks you're all some Mr. High or Mrs. or Miss High Horse. No. She sh no. She never knows what you actually want. She she knows what she wants you to want. Don't <laughs> go on a blind date. Why? Unless you have a unique mother. There may be relationships with some people who have unique mothers and okay, but for the rule of thumb is no. If your mother sets you up on a blind date, do not go. Why? No, my mother wouldn't set me up on a blind date. I have known, I just, I am old and experienced. Okay, I'm 50, but I'm not, you know, I'm old enough. No, when you were a teenager, she never said, hey, there's somebody you should meet. No one wanted to meet me as a teenager. I was ever home as a teenager for her to tell me that. <laughs> I met all the stoner chicks who were cutting school with me. That's who I met. And we were too stoned to do anything like date. So it was, you know, we didn't care. Hey, man, did you hear that new thing? No, I didn't. What about that movie? That's literally how conversations would go. It, it was just not sophisticated stuff here. Yeah, the pot we had was far better than the, the, our ability to smoke it well. Let's just put it that, that way. <laughs> As an adult, God, man, we ruined so much fucking good pie. What the hell is wrong with this? <laughs> but I loved it, man. I, I had, you know, I really did. I actually can't complain too much about my life as a kid. You know, I was unhappy because the school environment was completely wrong for me, but everything else, I can't complain. You know, I was an anxiety disorder little kid, no one understood, but other than the school environment, everything else was right. It's just that school environment caused so much damage that it was, you know, it took a long time to get over it. It took a lot of you know, love and self-care the love of families, the love of support of family. My family has been stood by me for 20 years now as I kind of try to rebuild myself into something that you know, we can try to be proud of. And I love them for that. And because it's a debt you can't repay. I don't, I could win the lottery. I could win the super lotto, you know, billion dollars three times and give them, a, give it to them all the time. And I'd still owe a debt. It's not about money. It's, there's a bigger debt that you can't pay when people express that kind of love and commitment to you over an extended period of time. Right. That's what we're here to talk about is love. And that's love. When your family supports you over years because they came to realize that your anxiety issues were unknown and that that wrong school environment caused psychological damage, which after 20 years of trying to be an adult and trying to fit in a box that you can never actually fit in, you have a complete breakdown, a complete emotional, mental kind of breakdown. I never got bad enough ride to go to a hospital or anything because I have this wonderful house and a loving family and a therapist who's quite good. <sighs> you know, we were able to do it mostly without medication, but that's a long, hard road. And it requires having a loving support group and a loving family that, that uh, supports you 
and loves you and lets you find your own path. Because if they try to force you down the path that they think you should go down, it's just creating more damage. You have to let that person build themselves back up on their own path, which means they're going to fail. They're going to fall down and they're going to get back up. And they have to be able to do that on their own. And that's hard. It's hard to watch someone you love. You have to support them at the same time while watching them fail and pick themselves up and relearn how to be a human being because they never were able to learn in the first place because of an anxiety disorder or, or you know, and so it's a hard process to watch and it requires a lot of love. And I, the, I am, I always say I am the most, uh, I am the luckiest man alive because I have all the love I can take. Love of you, my family, my children. The, if ever I need love, I can turn to many places and find it. And so part of what we want to do here is share my abundance. And that is about it for us tonight. Come back for it with us next week. You can find us, oops, you can find us at anchor.fm slash James just you can find that's the podcast address we're on Spotify Google podcast we do have an RSS feed so you guys can look us up on the podcast we are here on um, the Libertan Express website my personal I mean Facebook page my personal Facebook page I will create its own Facebook page here coming forward but I've been really busy with running the campaign and all that stuff and I'm, and this is as much dress rehearsal until we get this love line working. But look for the love line next week. Um, oh, what the hell is my number? Before I sign off, just my phone right here. Five three zero. No, not that one. We're doing something different. I actually, anyway, I can't find my phone. I, I don't know what the heck my my second number is. I know it's three two one zero is the last four digits. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's completely different because that one doesn't work. Okay. So anyway, that's it for tonight. Catch us next week for our late night love line, late night love. We will try and get the late love line up. I'll try and keep everybody updated. Please remember these are fractious times. It's uh, dangerous out there. Everything is unpredictable and the world needs more love. So please love everybody. Thank you.